Okay, here we go then with some hints for homework sheet number seven. So the first question is another one of the good old percentage questions. After a 10% increase in the train prices, a single to Glasgow cost £8.80. So a 10% increase means 110%. We turn that into a decimal. And we want to know the price before. So there's a magic word, before. So we're going backwards in time. So it's a reverse percentage question. Okay, so we take the price where it was and we divide it by your decimal from up here. Question 2, sketch this curve. So we go through the procedures, the roots, x squared minus 2x minus 15 is equal to 0. So we're going to factorise. That's going to give us some x numbers. Then we're going to get the line of symmetry, which is halfway between these. Then we're going to get the turning point. And how do we get the turning point? We simply substitute this value that we've got here for the line of symmetry. We put that back in at the start. And then the last thing we've got to do, once we've got the turning point, is we get the y-intercept. And the y-intercept, we know, comes from the number at the end. Once we've got all that information, we put it all on the graph. Crosses here, here, looks like that. You can tell me what this is, you can tell me what this is, you can tell, and so on. Question 3, dividing fractions. First thing we do with fractions, if they're multiplying and dividing, is make them top heavy. So 8 times 3, add 3 is 27, divided by, turn this one top heavy, 4 times 2 add 1, 9 over 4, what do we do when we divide fractions, we turn them upside down and make them into a multiply, do a wee bit of cancelling and it will pop your answer. Question 4, simultaneous equations. So we need to decide what we're getting rid of. Most people tend to go for getting rid of the y's. So I'm going to take the top equation and times it by 3. The bottom equation and times it by 2. Okay, because that's going to give us 6y and minus 6y in this position. Because these are different, it's going to be an add. You're going to end up with x equals. Substituting back in gives you y equals. We should be good at those. Question 5. The volume scale factor. We know that one vase is 100 metres tall. Got that in the picture. We know the other one is 60 metres tall. So we can work out the linear scale factor. Now what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the volume of this. No, no, we know the volume of the smaller one. We know the volume of this one is 20 litres. Now we're trying to find the volume of the larger one. So that means then that the larger number goes on the top for the linear scale factor. So cancel that down. How do we find the volume scale factor? We take that answer you just had and we cube it. So the new volume that you're trying to find is going to be the old volume, 20, times your volume scale factor, and you're done. Now, question six. Probably the hardest one in the homework this week. Calculate the shaded area. Well, when I look at this shape here, I see two shapes. I see this part here at the top. And then I see this part here at the bottom. So we're going to work them out separately. So the easiest one to work out is a triangle. Right, we know what its base is. The question tells us it's 6. Problem is, what's its height? Now we know the height of the whole shape is 10. So we know that your height for your answer in here is going to be less than 10. Question 
also tells us that the radius is 3. So this distance here is 3. So if that distance is 3, then it's quite easy to work out that the triangle is 7 high. Once we know that, we can use the formula area equals half base times height to get the area of the triangle. Next thing to work out is what was the area of the sector at the top there. Now we know that the area of a sector is the angle at the centre over 360 times pi r squared. Okay, big problem. Don't know what that area is. Eh, sorry, don't know what that angle is. However, we know if we look at the triangle, now I'm going to split the triangle in half. We know from this triangle, okay, let me draw it out again. We know that it's 7 tall. We know that it's 3 wide. If we could work out that angle there, which goes in there, we could double it to get this angle. And once we knew what that angle was, if we took that away from 360, then we'd get the angle that we were actually looking for. Okay, so we need to work on the triangle. I'll draw it again for you, which is 7 tall, 3 wide, to work out this angle. Right angle triangle, it's going to be a socket or question. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to name the side. So what's the name of that side? What's the name of that side? Decide, is it a sine, a cos or a tan? Work out the missing angle. Once you've got the missing angle, double it. Take it off 360. That's what goes in your formula. You know the radius is 3. The question tells us that the radius was 3. So therefore, once you've done all that, you can then work out what the total area is. Question 7. Solve the inequality. Well, we need to remove the brackets first of all. So that's 3x. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 4 times x is something less than 6. Get all the x's on this side. Get all the numbers on that side. You can then work out what x is to be less than. Just like doing an equation, except the only difference is that we put the less than symbol in instead of an equal sign. Lastly, number 8. Now the straight line, 3y, take away 2x equals 12, looks like this. That's what that straight line looks like. Okay. What you're asked for is what's this point here and what's this point here. Okay, now we know that any point on this axis up here is zero something. We know that any point on this axis here is something zero. Okay, so we're going to do basically the same thing twice to work out what these some things are. Okay, the first one I'm going to do for you is I'll do where it crosses the y-axis. Okay, so it crosses at some zero something. Zero something. Okay, so that's the x number, that's the y number. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put these numbers in to the formula. So I don't know what the y number is, that's what I'm trying to find. So 3y, take away, now we know the x number is zero. Okay, tells us here, x number is 0, so 2 zeros is 0, equals 12, so I've got 3y is equal to 12, so 1y equals 4. So it crosses that axis at 0, 4. Okay, so I've done the first one, you do the next one. Now the difference with the next one is that we're putting in the point something 0. Okay, so there's your x number, there's your y number. So this time, it's the y number, which is going to be 0. And you can work out what x is. Okay, hopefully that's good for these guys.